Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat and today I am going through amazing books with neurodiverse authors or main characters. If you don't know, I am hosting the Bias Breaker Readathon in December and one of the prompts is to read a book with a neurodivergent main character and or author. So I have read all of these books and I highly recommend every single one. So please, if you want to, write them down, get open your Goodreads, pen, paper, whatever you need. Um, because I love all of these books and highly, highly recommend them. Let's get started with my favorite. So this is The Reckless Oath We Made by Bryn Greenwood. I love this book so much it hurts me. <laughs> so this follows two main characters, uh, Z, who is a six foot tall motorcycle riding badass, but she got in an accident so she's been going to physical therapy and that is where she runs into Gentry who is an autistic young man who believes that he is sent to be Z's protector and her knight. She at first is like, I don't know you, please get away from me. And he's like, okay. But then her sister is kidnapped when there is a prison outbreak and she has to go off on this adventure to find her sister and she accepts the help of Gentry and they go off on the adventure together. Now the rep in this, um, Gentry is autistic and oh my god, I love this book so, so much, so I highly recommend it. Next up is a controversial one. This is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. So this is about a very dysfunctional family where the mom is largely absent and there's no dad. And basically there are two main characters, a brother and a sister in the family. The brother is the oldest and then the sister is the second oldest. And they have to take care of their siblings and also navigate like rent and the harsh realities of life, like making money to buy food. And they start to fall in love. And this is a very controversial novel, but it made me cry my eyes out. I was like wounded for weeks about this book. Um, and the older brother has severe social anxiety, panic attacks, and a stutter. So um, if you're looking for something to rip your heart out that has mental health in it, maybe this is for you. Next up is one you might not know. So I'm going to talk about Herman Hess, who was diagnosed with type 2 bipolar disorder. Um, and that is why a lot of people think his books deal so much with the self and realities and they kind of have like this dark overall tone to them. Um, so I'm a huge, huge um, Herman Hesse fan. My favorite is Narcissus and Goldman, which follows um, a woodworker and also a man who was trained in the religious monastic lifestyle when they go off together. Um, and discover about life. So this talks about a lot about science, religion, and life, and death, and stuff like that. Those are kind of the themes in all of Hess's books. I'm just a huge Hess fan altogether. Uh, my second favorite is Demian, which is by far my most watched video on this channel. It has like thousands of views, um, and it's because BTS has an album based off of this. Uh, so a lot of people watch that to understand this book. Um, and then also Steppenwolf, which is about alienation. Um, and I also really highly recommend it. So um, yeah, I am a huge lover of Herman Hess and recommend him. Next up is my favorite from high school. This is White Oleander by Janet Fitch. Uh, this one, be careful, be gentle with yourself, okay? So this is about a young girl named Astrid who his mother is put into prison because she was like this great poet and she ended up killing her lover who cheated on her. Um, so the daughter is raised in the foster care system and you follow her from about 12 to I think 18 and it's her different role models throughout life and her growing up um, while she is also idolizing and under the influence of her very cold and like distant mother. Um, and the main character in this has suicidal ideation and depression. So definitely be careful with this one, but it was my favorite for such a long time and I love it. Next up is a funny one. So this is Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. This is probably my favorite memoir of all time because Jenny Lawson is known as the bloggess. She's very humorous. She's kind of a comedian online personality. Um, but this also talks a lot about her physical and mental health and how she deals with it. 
So on the mental side of it, um, she has anxiety, depression, OCD, and trichotillomania, uh, which is what I have. So I highly recommend this. She is absolutely hilarious, and I wish I knew her in real life. So I really recommend this as a memoir if you're into that. Next up is the only romance I have ever read with a good rep for my mental disorder. So this is Sound of Secrets by Whitney Barbetti. And the main female character in this has trichotillomania, um, and it is done so well. So this is a romance between um, a woman and a man who she has liked him for so long, but he's convinced that like he's not good enough for her and she's convinced she's not good enough for him. And then miscommunication ensues. This was so good and it had great mental health rep. So I highly recommend this. Next up is another hard hitting one. This is We See the Stars by Kate Van Hooft. Uh, this is dealing with a young boy who has selective mutism. Uh, he doesn't speak anymore and no one really knows why. Um, and his teacher at school is trying to help him and figure out what has happened. But one day when the teacher goes missing, the boy decides that he knows what has happened and he's going to set out and find her himself to devastating consequence. So uh, yeah, definitely this one is very painful to read, but I thought that it was quite worth it in the end. Next up is The Lamb Shall Slaughter the Lion by Margaret Kiljoy. So Margaret Kiljoy is just kind of awesome. She's this trans femme anarchist punk writer. And this world is kind of similar to her, where we're following a main character who is searching for her missing friend. And she goes to the last town she was seen, uh, which is this anarchist town that has made a deal with a demon in order to keep outside forces outside so that they can continue living their style of anarchy. And there's a lot of queer rep in here and a lot of demonic rep in here. Um, but specifically, uh, one of the characters in here deals with panic attacks. So um, that's the rep there. Next up, I want to talk about A List of Cages by Robin Rowe. This one again, be gentle with yourself. So we are following two main characters. One is a boy who is very popular and beloved at school, and he gets in a lot of trouble though because he can't really sit still. He has ADHD, and so in order to serve his time when he gets in trouble, he is kind of paired with a student that keeps missing school um, to help him make sure he gets to classes and that kind of thing. He realizes that the student that he's paired up with is his foster brother from childhood where this young boy was part of his family for a while, um, but something has happened to the boy in the meantime and he's a lot different than the main character remembers and he's going to find out why. This book is devastating <laughs> and very dark, um, but I loved the friendship in here so, so much. Next up is The First Time She Drowned by Carrie Clutter. So this deals with a very toxic mother-daughter relationship where two and a half years ago, um, our main character was dumped into a menstrual institu institution against her will by her mother um, and now she's finally out. But the string is that her mother will pay for her to go to a certain university if she goes to the university the mother chooses and that they remain in contact. And this was just brutal. Like the push and pull of like in order to move on in life she needs to get that help otherwise she can't go to university but also her mother is such a bad, bad person and like bad parent. And it's like, ugh, yeah, it's very hard to read. Uh, but yeah, the main character in this struggles with depression and suicidal thoughts. So again, be careful. Next up on this list is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. You might already know about this because I've talked about it a lot. Um, this is following an investigative journalist who travels back to her hometown to look into the murder of young girls. And she is going to stay with her mother at her old house that she has a lot of bad memories from. So there's a lot of mental health rep in here as well as triggers. So the main character self harms and she's also alcoholic. And then the mother is a hypochondriac and also has trichotillomania. So there's a lot in here um, and it's, it's a great thriller in my opinion. I wish I hadn't seen the TV series first uh, so I recommend the book first and then the TV series. They're both very strong. Next up is Unbroken, 13 Stories Starring Disabled Teens, edited by Mariek Nishkamp. Uh, so this one, first off, I mean the cover is just absolutely gorgeous. 
But um, yeah, this has 13 different stories, some of which are physical disability and some of which are uh, mental disorders. So on the mental side of things, this has representation for bipolar disorder, anxiety, panic attacks, schizophrenia, bipolar 2 disorder, and autism. Uh, for me personally, I think this was a three and a half star story collection. Some of the stories were stronger than others. However, I really enjoyed that every single story in here was written by an own voices disabled writer. That alone makes me want to recommend this to everyone and just push it into the hands of every single reader ever. That finishes up all of my recommendations. I don't know how I haven't made a list like this before. Please do let me know any recommendations you have down below for neurodiverse main characters or authors. I would love to hear it and I will talk to you later in another video soon. Lots of love. Bye!